You're listening to Tim Bolkley's Five Minute Bible. Humor in the Bible, Book 14, 2 Chronicles, Chapter 18. The strange tale of Micaiah ben Imla is certainly a strong candidate as intended humor. It's got all the characteristics that I listed hyperbole, 400 prophets, incongruity, a true prophet who swears to tell the truth in verses 12 and 13, but in verse 14 tells a falsehood. A light hearted mood, well, not really, but there is feasting, and some scholars think that's as good. Surprise all the way through, the whole story's a surprise. Ingenuity. Ahab's manoeuvring to avoid death is ingenious in verse 29, and is suggesting that Jehoshaphat of Judah wear his royal robes is disingenuous. Jehoshaphat's request that maybe he could find another prophet is pretty ingenious. All the team of royal prophets are already there. Inferiority. Well, Micaiah was in jail, yet before two kings he speaks freely. Even kings can't forestall Yahweh's plans. Disguise, or something or someone pretending to be someone else? Well, there's Ahab pretending to be a commoner. And there's Micaiah pretending to tell the truth. Inelasticity. Well, Ahab's manoeuvring throughout is his attempt to use his smarts and his power to outwit Yahweh human pretension in all its lack of glory Ahab even disguised in commoners clothing so all of the characteristics are there the story is clearly intended to be funny and as you read it you'll see that it is funny the only question left is what's the point of the story now Jehoshaphat had great riches and honor and he made a marriage alliance with Ahab after some years he went down to Ahab in Samaria. Ahab slaughtered an abundance of sheep and oxen for him and for the people who were with him, and induced him to go up against Ramoth Gilead. King Ahab of Israel said to King Jehoshaphat of Judah, Will you go with me to Ramoth Gilead? He answered him, I am with you. My people are your people. We will be with you in the war. But Jehoshaphat also said to the king of Israel, in Inquire first for a word from the Lord. Then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, four hundred of them, and said to them, Shall we go into battle against Ramoth Gilead, or shall I refrain? Interesting change of pronouns there. They said, Go up, for God will give it into the hand of the king. But Jehoshaphat said, Is there no other prophet of the Lord here of whom we may inquire? The king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, There is still one other of whom we may inquire of the Lord, Micaiah son of Imla, but I hate him for he never prophesies anything favourable about me, only disaster. Jehoshaphat said, Let the king not say such a thing. Then the king of Israel summoned an officer, and said, Bring quickly Micaiah son of Imla. Now the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat king of Judah were sitting on their thrones, arrayed in their robes, and they were sitting at the threshing floor at the entrance of the gate of Samaria, and all the prophets were prophesying before them. Zedekiah son of Chenonah, made for himself horns of iron, and he said, Thus says the Lord, with these you shall gore the Arameans until they are destroyed. All the prophets were prophesying the same, and saying, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and triumph. The Lord will give it into the hand of the king. The messenger who had gone to summon Micaiah said to him, Look, the words of the prophet are with one accord favourable to the king. Let your word be like the word of one of them, and speak favourably. But Micaiah said, As the Lord lives, Whatever my God says, that I will speak. When he had come to the king, the king said to him, Micaiah, shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle? Or shall I refrain? He answered, Go up and triumph. They will be given into your hand. But the king said to him, How many times must I make you swear to tell me nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord? Then Micaiah said, I saw all Israel scattered on the mountains, like sheep without a shepherd. The Lord said, these have no master, let each one go home in peace. The king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell you that he would not prophesy anything favourable about me but only disaster? And then, after some highly complicated and puzzling prophetic by-play, as a result of which Micaiah ben Imla is rushed off to jail until King Ahab should return in peace from the battle, then Ahab, trying to avoid being killed, pretends to be a commoner, and is chased by Syrian forces, and by accident killed. 
the battle grew hot that day the chapter ends and the king of israel propped himself up in his chariot facing the arameans until evening then at sunset he died the next chapter begins king jehoshaphat of judah returned in peace to his house in jerusalem just as micaiah had prophesied so perhaps that last laugh of the imprisoned and condemned micaiah ben imla is the point of the story god's word cannot be thwarted.